Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Welcome to a new day. Hope that all is well with you. Um, you know, this situation that we're facing with the coronavirus and COVID-19 is challenging for us all in different ways. And a lot of people in our community are facing the challenge of not being able to be close to family and especially to grandchildren. And uh, we talk about this often. The one thing we've asked the question, you know, that you're missing at the moment, it is that. It is your grandchildren, your family being able to just give them hugs, to be able to you know, be physically close. But we're going to have to roll with the changes here. Things are a little different than we ever have anticipated or wanted. But I think that we are fortunate in that we've got technology, technology to help us to connect. And that's going to be, um, I think, a lifeline for a lot of people. Now, one of our bloggers, Judy Jacobs, wrote this article um, on, on virtual communication. And they're the giving uh, an overview of the different applications that are out there for us to use. And if you are not expert at virtual communications, that is online communication, then you know, this may be helpful for you. Read Judy's email be, uh, uh, article because it's really uh, comprehensive, gives you links and all the details. I'm going to just review them at a kind of high level. But honestly, this has been my lifeline actually for a while because I have um, family in two countries like many of, of you do. And so for a long time, I've been using some of these apps to connect check in with my grandson and, uh, and just be closer, uh, in, if, if only in a sort of artificial way. But you could do things that make it really, really useful. And I'll talk to, at the end, I'll talk a little bit about some of the things that I do to just make it a bit more fun. But here's the facts about what is available. And uh, these tools are, um, I think they're all free and they're, they're just a matter of downloading them to your computer or your phone and knowing how to use them. Now, YouTube is your friend too, because there's a tutorial for just about everything under the sun these days. So if you want to know how to use FaceTime, how to use uh, these certain apps, there's um, information there for you. But most of them are pretty intuitive. You just have to be a little bit brave and just go in there and try it. So the first one is FaceTime. Now FaceTime is, is an easy option if you have um, a, 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 an iPhone or a, an Apple product because it only runs on Apple phones or Apple laptops. So it's, it's one of those things that um, both people that are communicating have to have an Apple um, iPhone and that um, you know, it's literally a, a, um, it's an, um, a button on the phone. So it's super, super simple. No downloading or setup is required. It's just there. Just tap the plus symbol at the top of your top right hand corner of your of your screen and add people to your call. And then once you've established that connection, you can just keep pressing that, that, that same link all the time. And FaceTime is really fun because you just literally press the button and it, it appears as a phone call on the other person's phone. They click accept and you talk and you're, you're visual, your, 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 your video is working and you can see each other. So it's really, really cool. And FaceTime is because I have uh, an Apple iPhone and so does my most of my fa all my family has has Apple products. It's easy for me. So I use FaceTime quite a bit and it allows up to 32 people. So you actually can have a very large little gathering like the whole family and friends can get together on FaceTime if you all got Apple products. So that's a really good, easy one. No setup required. Just use the phone for FaceTime. The second one that uh, I've actually used a while for interviews is Zoom. But Zoom is a conferencing application that um, businesses used for years to get people together in a virtual room and have a conversation. But now Zoom is being used for all kinds of things. And even if you don't want to use it too much yourself, it's probably a good idea to become familiar because a lot of uh, people who are doing great sessions, you know, meditation or, or workout or any kinds of um, you know, just group chats, gatherings together, are, are using Zoom as the platform. So even if you don't want to be an organizer of a Zoom meeting, there'll be a, there's actually a lot of options. And I, I know you're all experiencing this. I get the feedback all the time, like there's almost too much. Everyone's using Zoom to connect. And the way that Zoom works is you have to download the app. And if you um, are given a link to a, a meeting, you just have to click on that link and follow the instructions because they're, um, you know, they're, they're applied to the, to the device that you're using. If you're using a phone, you have to install the phone version of Zoom. If you're on a laptop uh, or computer, you have to install the, the PC version of Zoom. But they guide you through this. It's super easy. And so you, um, you just literally click on the link, install Zoom, and then you enter the meeting and you are a face on the screen that the organizer can see. So if there's 
100 people that have cl clicked on that meeting link, that the organizer will see 100 little faces. It's like a little, um, like a collage, like a checkerboard of, um, of, of faces. And each one can can speak, each person can hear the, the, the leader and they can have their own conversation. And there's a there's an etiquette for, um, you know, just muting your phone while, every, while the meeting's going on and then raising your hand virtually so that if you want to say something. So Zoom is a really cool app. We've done it um, with a couple of our meetings and they're, it's just so interesting and fun to see the, all the faces and, and be able to hear, um, like have a conversation. And we just, you know, get together. You can have a, have virtual dinners, virtual cocktail hour. But Zoom is a really, really good one. You can talk now for over 40 minutes. There was a limitation, but now you can just, you know, just chat for a while. And there's also a way to record the meeting and also to share it, uh, share a screen. So if I wanted to show something on my that was on my screen to the whole group, I can do that. So that's, that's Zoom. Zoom is really cool. Now, um, the other one is WhatsApp. Now, WhatsApp is a very popular mobile social app for just conversations, for sending, you know, messages and, and communicating. It's actually super easy to use, but it's based on, um, it's, it's mostly used for instant messaging, but it's got end-to-end -end encryption, which means that it's uh, protected. You know, you, it's, it's a safe place to talk. And it's also got a video conferencing capability. And Judy talks about this. I, I'm not so familiar with this because I've not used it, but it's limited to four people for video group calling, works on Apple or Android phones, and it requires a setup first on the phone. So um, you have to just sign in and open a WhatsApp account, and then you give your contact information to the person who's organizing the, the meeting, or if you're organizing it, you, know, you need to have um, those contacts in your list. And then you just join, ask them to join. And then they can connect via the video conferencing capability of WhatsApp. WhatsApp's a good one. Now, most people are very familiar with Skype. Skype is uh, the one that's been around, well, I don't know if it's the longest, but it's, it's very been, been established as a way of talking on your computer or your phone free of charge using your video camera. So you can actually connect and talk on Skype. Now, it's, you do need to, to install the app. Uh, on your on your on your device, your phone or your laptop PC, and once you've done that, you have you then have to put in a name to assign assign yourself a name so that they can find people can find you, and then you just literally invite your anyone from your contact list to join a conversation, and you see them and they see you. It's a it's a really easy thing to do. I think you have to have yeah fifty people at a time on Skype. 50. So you can actually do quite big meetings on Skype, but you'll find a lot of people are using Skype or Zoom as ways of uh, bringing communities together. And we do it on 60 and Me, and um, we use Facebook as well, Facebook Live. But there's uh, lots of different ways that, you know, using Skype that you can use it. Google Hangouts is great if you've got Google devices. That has up to 25 people at a time can join. And of course, everybody then must have their the app on their device the Google Hangouts. So Google Hangouts is another really, really good one. Of course, all of these require one very important thing. Well, there's two actually, but one is important, which is a good internet connection. You've got to have good internet. And if you want to be seen properly on Zoom or any of these, these apps, uh, these um, platforms, you need good light. So if you're out and about somewhere, get into the light where you're, the light's on your face, otherwise you're gonna be in the dark. And um, same with Zoom. If you have a, um, a light you can put in front of you, then your face is more illuminated and people can see you. So it's just a, a nicer thing, nicer experience. Strong internet, good light. And of course, as, as I mentioned, etiquette around conferencing. Of course, the most important thing is that only one person speaks at a time when you've got 50 or 100 people and that you, so you meet, just mute your phone and there's a little, on the on all of these apps, there's a, usually a little microphone that you can just click on that mutes you so you can't be heard. And of course, they're raising the hand um, etiquette so that you don't just, well, just using good good manners in, in a phone call environment. But the, the host normally can guide you through this. What I was trying to achieve in this um, uh, short video was to tell you what's available and what apps are most commonly used for video conferencing. Thanks to Judy for just sort of laying it all out and please check out her um, uh, her article. And oh, the thing I was gonna tell you about, which is very cool and I do it all the time with my grandson, uh, grandchildren is um, just call. 
just call the number using any one of these apps, Skype or Zoom or, or um, uh, WhatsApp, um, FaceTime, and just talk. Say, hi guys, how you doing? And then what are you up to? And show me what you're doing. And just li literally, literally leave the camera going. Just leave it going and watch them walking around and you can be having dinner, have a cup of coffee or tea. <laughs> just, you know, just kind of be there and you don't have to have a face-to-face -face serious conversation. It can be just like, hey guys, what are you doing? And my little grandson, for example, plays with his trains and it's like, oh, bye-bye, I've got this train or this one's doing that. And it's all oh, very cool. And it doesn't have to be like a serious conversation. It can just be fun. And that's kind of the beauty of these amazing technology solutions that we have. So are you familiar with any of these apps? Do, what, which one do you use? Or if any of them do you use for your conversations with family and friends? Are any of these ones you already know about? What's your favorite? Leave your comments below. Let's have a, a conversation. And if you've got any challenges, we'll try to uh, deal with them because this is going to open doors for you. This is going to help you get through this time that we're all facing right now to be able to connect with those people that you miss. And it's not perfect, but it's it's good. So let us know what you're using, if anything, uh, maybe who you're missing and how you connect with them. It'd be lovely to have those stories. Okay, everyone, take very good care of yourselves. Stay safe and well, and know that we're thinking about you. Take good care. We'll talk again soon. Bye-bye for now.